This is the Flabbergasted Podcast, where we just can't believe you haven't seen it. Every episode, we discuss a movie that one of us has seen and the other hasn't. Follow us on Instagram at FlabberPod and subscribe in your podcast app of choice. I'm your host, Rogi. Let's get to it. We are going to be discussing today the 2023 movie. Oh, what kind of movie is it? It doesn't tell me what kind of movie it is. It's a movie. It's called Dungeons and Dragons. It was released less than a month ago, uh, directed by two men named John, John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein, and stars Chris Pine and other people who I kind of recognized. I have action, adventure, comedy, and fantasy. That's a lot of categories. Pick a lane, Dungeons and Dragons movie. I think comedy fantasy is the lane it's residing in. You didn't like, actually, you didn't think it was very action or adventure-y? I mean, it was both of those, but you said pick a lane. So I think it's more comedy fantasy okay. than it is action-y. Sure. So the fun part about this movie is that we went and saw it together this afternoon. Woo-woo. That's a first for in FlabberPod history. Uh, how did you think that experience went? I think, as I recall, you had some commentary. Oh, yes. So it was definitely fun to go see a movie. I really enjoy seeing a movie at the theater. Mm, yeah. But what surprised me is I actually don't think I realized this about you because we've, we've gone to see movies right. with our significant others before together as a group thing. And Jeremy and I are in the camp of we want to get there early. We want to get particular seats. We want to see the previews. and our seats are the highest we can get and the most towards the center. And so the reason for that for me is I'm a shorty. I'm like five foot. (laughs) If I'm not sitting in seats with risers, I can't see over people's heads. And that just destroys the movie going experience for me. But you made the comment. So I, when I went into the theater, I picked a seat so that I would sit on one end. Jeremy could sit a little bit closer to the middle And then I assumed like you or Rachel would sit next to him and you guys, like I would be on the outside and you guys would be more towards the center. Okay. But like we would be centered in the aisle and you and Rachel ended up sitting next to me. So you were completely on the end. And I was like, I can move down. And you guys were like, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. We don't have strong preferences about where we sit. And I'm just like, really? You don't? Like not not even a little bit? Man, I mean, if... This has happened a couple of times that we've, I've been in a theater with like one other person or no other people. In those times, I guess we will usually sit in about the middle vertically and horizontally, kind of like the G, the geometric middle of the theater. Or sometimes we will sit in the... Because, you know, most theaters these days, you walk in and then you have to either go, you know, south towards the screen or north towards the risers. And there's like a hallway in the middle. We will often sit in that first row by the hallway for the leg room right i can put my feet up on like the handrails and things like that i'll do that a lot besides that if that is not immediately an option then my only real preference is that i not sit in like the front row maybe front two rows just from like a craning sort of perspective so you're like this is my preference but if i go with other people i'm really flexible the preference is based almost entirely around leg room so my like visual watching the movie aspect, it doesn't matter to me as long as I'm not having to crane my neck. But for our audience at home, you are quite tall or at least definitely tall. I am life. over a foot taller than you. Yes. So it's the, it's funny. My preference is completely based on visual right. and yours is completely based on legroom. And now we know why. Right. You are <laughs> in the trenches having to make very practical decisions. And I'm like, oh yeah, I mean, I can just kind of sit wherever. Like it's not a big deal. I'm always going to be able to, yeah, I definitely don't have to think about being able to see over people. We went to a theater and I, I can't remember exactly where it was. It was either like, it was either in Orlando or it was in Nashville. And I know that's crazy. Very different. Same thing. But it had like a balcony area. So you had to go through a different entrance to the theater to get to the balcony area. And then the funny thing about that was, is it had like these reclining seats, which was great. Like who doesn't love reclining seats? But then it had these like little walls. So you were, it was like 
very private in this weird way. Gross. But if you, if I reclined my seat any, like the wall was in front of, in front of the seats. So if I, so okay. instead of like a row of other seats, it was like a little partition half wall, like three feet tall or something. Okay. But if I reclined my seat any, the wall started creeping up, up in your vision. The, yes. <laughs> and so I couldn't see the bottom of the, the screen. So it was yeah. so obnoxious. And I was like, where are those booster seats when you need them? I think those are for children. I mean, I'm five foot. I could probably pass. I think I was taller than you. Definitely by fourth grade. But I don't know if as a third grader I was five foot. Probably not, right? That's a that's asking a lot. I mean, I don't actually know. I know that I was mostly the shortest person in my class right. since I went to class. It's crazy. But anyways, that really surprised me yeah. about the, the preference situation. We like to sit sometimes um, near the aisles to make it easier to go get popcorn refills, right? Not having to climb over people. Sometimes that part is yes. useful. I do always check to see the least amount of people on either side of me. And then yeah. I take into account how Age. many of them do I know? Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. Like, I don't mind stepping over the people I know as right. much as like strangers, but I also try to like get everything I need. We're talking back in the day, which is not really that far, not that long ago. We would get there like an hour early to make sure we got good seats. So we would like prep everything and like 10 minutes before the movie is supposed to start, then we go out, get any additional snacks. If we wanted snacks, restroom break or anything like that, and then come back in and be ready to watch the movie. Wow. We live like six minutes from the theater. And so we usually get there like maybe two minutes before the stated start time. I mean, we kind of did that today because we were running late, right. but it was good because it was a Sunday afternoon. So it didn't matter as much, but I think that's the other thing we like to get there early. I mean, I've said this, so we get the good seats, but then I hate meeting people there and mm -hmm. they want us to save seats. So if we're going to go see like a Marvel movie yeah. on opening night, which we like to do opening night viewings, then it like makes me anxious to try and save seats. Yeah. And I'm, I, so I just started telling people like, listen, I'm not saving your seat. Right. That's fair. You don't like, you might not get to sit with us if you want to come with us to the movie Yeah. and it is what it is. Yeah. I think that's I will fair. Save your seat. If you're like sitting there and then you're like, Oh, I'm going to go get a snack. Right. Obviously, that's I'll different. Save your seat then. Yeah. You've already established that that's your theater. seat. Yeah. All right. Anyways, Thanks for listening guys. Um, let us know <laughs> what, where you like to sit in the theater and we will uh, see you again later. Bye. <laughs> we saw Dungeons and Dragons today. Had you seen any trailers or anything for it? Yeah, I saw, I saw a trailer before a movie. I don't remember which one, like in the theater. And I remember thinking, oh yeah, I would go see that just because. Chris Pine. Chris Pine, but it was like funny and I don't know. It just looked fun to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I, I would see that. Yeah. It's like the kind of fun. It, I mean, obviously it is based on IP, existing IP, but not one that's been done to death. It's not like, you know, most family oriented movies, which I think we can say this kind of fell in that category. It wasn't, it wasn't trying to be super edgy or adult or anything. For sure. Most of that stuff is based on comic books or something that like, well, okay, it's the fourth Ant-Man movie or whatever. And this is like, a, you know, refreshing, just romp in some ways yeah. that you were like, okay, yeah. Yeah. A romp I was with some new characters. Definitely fun. Um, I didn't, there's like no sex in it, which is good. Very little swearing, mm -hmm. but like good family movie. I think yeah. too. Yes. Like just super chill. And the other thing that I was, if I'm reading this correctly or whatever, using my brain correctly here, Dungeons and Dragons has so much, like so many different stories that could be told that sure. you're not really stepping on any toes by picking one and telling it. Like you're not, you're not, um, what is the word? I don't know. You're not, you're not crashing anything or making fans go crazy because you didn't follow along the exact same thing because yeah. isn't Dungeons and Dragons all about like choosing your own path. Yeah. So, I mean, this is kind of where my nascent Dungeons and Dragons career and knowledge will sort of help us a little bit. I'm currently DMing a game and playing in a game 
and watching some other games. <laughs> the I mean so is our, dungeon mastering. I'm like yes, running the game, say. the one behind the, the screen or the curtain, if you will. Um, there are books like I have one right here in front of me, Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage, right? So that has some built in plot lines and things to assist a dungeon master with running a game. Um, there are all, there's a bunch of books put out by Wizards of the Coast, um, the company that makes it. Now within those, there, it's kind of like the Pirates of the Caribbean line where it's they're more of guidelines than they are like hard and fast rules, right? I mean, this is something if you want to use it to give yourself some structure, but if your characters become obsessed with the guy that owns the bar across the street and they want to do a whole thing with that, like you just go and do that instead. You're like, I guess, I guess that's what we're doing today. So I am not. So when you say books, it's not like a predetermined storyline. Right. It's not the same as reading Lord of the Rings. Yes and no. I mean, it, for me, it is definitely not. I think there are an, a number of people out there for whom it is that way. Because, I mean, I recognize the the names of the towns and even a couple characters, right? Lord uh, Never Ember, who took back over once Hugh Grant's character was no longer mayor of that town, right? That guy is involved in some of the stories that I am doing right now. But it's it's a little, I mean, he's not that way. He's a little different. He was nicer and more good. And in some of my stuff, he's more evil. But it's kind of like a multiverse situation, right? Where, yes, there are some things that like are maybe the prime storyline that are true, but everyone's version of that in their home game is going to be different. Like you can get on, there's a like a wiki that'll tell you exactly when that guy was born and died and stuff. But also everyone gets that if in this movie or in your game or in this book, it's a little different than that, then Hey, it's a little different than that. Like it's not a big deal. What, and that's pretty well accepted amongst the fans. Pretty well. I'm like, it's probably okay to be a couple different. people. I mean, there are books like probably a couple people will be like, Oh, this actually contradicts like this book, you know, that, but, it, but they're not, it's not to the extent of, like it is Lord of the Rings where like, this is the book. This is what is canon. Um, you can't deviate from that. Like there are books that you could point to, but it's just a different vibe because most people are like, yes, okay, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like that's a book that's canon, but that's not really how D&D works, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, from like a D&D perspective, the thing that annoyed me the most about the movie, and like I wasn't expecting it to be like super faithful to necessarily the rules. I mean, it's a role playing game. Like you're rolling dice all the time. You have certain spells that like hit or don't hit and your sword and all kinds of stuff. But in general, so in general it was fine, right? <clears throat> you had a barbarian. She freaked out and like punched people in the face. That's fine. That's normal. But Chris Pine's character was a bard. I mean, he's, he's carrying a loot. Like that's what he does. He's a harper, sure. which is fine. That checks out. He's a bard. He needs, he needed to play his loot magically sometimes like that that's what bards do is they play a song and then that song has an impact on it it puts an, an enemy to sleep or it charms them into like magically following him around like his i mean so it, it took like a very real world like practical people. gritty version of like oh he's a bard like he has a loot but like that didn't actually do anything which it very much like if he was a character would have i mean he 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 didn't really contribute anything to the party in like a he just kept hitting me by the end. He was hitting people with his loot, with his little guitar thing. I was like, what? Which is a pretty sturdy instrument if you're hitting people yes. with it, by the he way. He like slid halfway across the city after being launched with the loot on his back. it wasn't damaged at all. No, not at all. I mean, I don't know if it played because he didn't play it after that, but same thing. So are we supposed to just assume that this was a magical instrument in some ways, which is fine. That could definitely exist. You could have just told me that. They could have been like, oh, look at this special magical loot. But then why is it not like charming someone or entrancing them when he plays it or giving some kind of benefit to his teammates or getting them pumped up. That, that happened like a little tiny bit, like tw twice he sang a song with Holga. Yeah. But that just seemed more like a natural, like, Oh, remember we're friends and we know this song together more than it was like the pow the magic of music, if you will, is doing yeah. something that benefits you, which is like mechanically how it would work in game. So that was the only thing that I noticed that was like, um, that's not actually how DD works. Okay, but how D and D works? The little blurb, and we we'll, we should probably put a spoilers bumper on here. But if it says you listen to a Dragons movie podcast, people, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but just saying. But the little blurb about oh gosh, I forgot his name, but he's talking about yeah, you have to be five steps 
on only on odds and all that on the bridge, that's a yes. D and D thing. The, the when Bridgerton he's like guy. listening to all those instructions. Um, yeah, there's definitely D and D stuff where you're in a cave or a dungeon of some sort, and there, then there's going to be like a puzzle that comes up, right? Um, and like you have to you have to remember. Oh, I saw this sign earlier, and so that means like you're answering a riddle, um, or you have to yeah press things in the right order. Um, so as a fan, were you like, oh, this is funny because they're going to have to do this, and then. The guy steps on it. And you're like, okay, never mind. Did that disappoint you? No, or not at all. Like, that's very oh, that's classic, funny. right? Because you're, you're role playing, and so I mean, Holgo is even smarter, honestly, than she should be. I mean, normally you're in you're playing a game of D and D. Do you know what Leroy Jenkins? Have you ever seen that meme? It's a guy in World of Warcraft who like just runs in to a big battle when everyone else is like, okay, here's what we're going to do. And you're going to do this and you're going to stand in the back. And they're trying to have like a very specific plan. And then he just runs in and goes, Leroy Jenkins and like sprints in, just starts hacking people. And they're going, oh, Leroy, no, Leroy, gosh, dang it. Like you're screwing it up. So normally barbarians are supposed to like, you, you know, they'll listen to you if you say this is what the plan is, but if they bumble into something or if someone that has low intelligence, like that's, it makes sense that they would just go and try stuff and not really listen or think through all the implications. Um, so you're always having to find workarounds, right? You're supposed to solve this puzzle, but also if you hit it hard enough, then it just, the door opens anyway, right? It's, it's Luke okay. Skywalker shooting the, with his blaster to, to lock a door. And then someone else was like, Oh, I have to override the mainframe. I mean, you always got to figure something out. Okay, so that was very on par. With yeah, the and then she said I could throw my axe across, you know, with a rope attached to it. And you, you always get players trying to do stuff like that. Like, okay, how wide is it? Could I run and jump across it? And I'm like, well, let's see. What's your athletics? Oh, okay, I don't think, you know, normally you can jump about 15 feet. So, like, that's <laughs> going to be too far. Okay, well, this character's little. Can I throw him across? You're just trying to figure that stuff out. I mean, that's what, that's what's fun about it is, it's like the problem solving, I think. So my, one of the things I wrote down that I really liked about the movie was, and you'll think about this, it comes around, but when he's talking about, I can't just solve any problem with magic. I hate it when people do this. And then he starts talking about it. And it's funny because even you guys talked about it in the Harry um, Mm -hmm. Potter podcast. You're like, just magic, just magic, just fixed it. She kept, and she kept being like, pay for it with magic. (laughs) Yeah. And Jeremy calls it um, hand wavy. Like right. it just, you're just supposed to assume it happens and it, it works out fine. Yeah. And everything's fine. So I like that they kind of called that out and, and went with it a little bit. Yeah. Or him saying stuff like, well, I have to be able to see both of the surfaces that I'm casting this on. Or, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's like, you know, she kept, the druid kept switching between her magic, for, her wild forms. shapes, um, her like animals and stuff. And like I wrote that down as my favorite sequence, by the way. Oh, uh, when she was spying and then like yes. switch went from fly to rat and stuff like that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. In if you wanted to get really like rules Nazi on it, um, she would she only has so many times per day that she can transform. And so I was counting them like, okay, so it's like something it's like equal to her druid level that she can use a bonus action to wild shape. And so I was trying to count how many shapes she did. Cause then she goes back to human and then back to an animal. I was like, she's going to be like a pretty high level druid to be able to do this. stuff. Is it changes or is it shapes she can take? It is times that you shift. So going from okay, human so how many times to fly she shift? and then that's one count? fly to rat is one. And then rat to human is a third and then human back to rat. And then she went from rat. She went to a cat too. To bird. Yeah. She was a cat at one point and then she was that weird bird and then a deer. I mean, it was a lot. And she kept doing owl bear. Love an owl bear. Yes. I love that. Love that too. Yeah. I, I, she was my favorite character, obviously. Did you think she got enough? screen time i've seen that critique i haven't seen a lot of trailers or anything like that but i have seen people say hey this was a cool character who they introduced and then she just turned to an owlbear a couple times after that like she didn't she didn't continue to have like a development arc at all um maybe she didn't have a development arc well maybe she did because at the beginning she's kind of like I'm over this. It's not working. And then she gets pulled into the team and then she becomes a part of the team and helps them achieve their goal. And then at the end, she sticks with them. Yeah. I don't, I can understand maybe saying she doesn't have enough screen time, but if you think about it, they've got, let me just five of the main character, or maybe not five main characters. If you count Hugh Grant would be the fifth, I guess. 
Yeah. I mean, they, they have a lot of people they're splitting screen time and story time with. So mm-hmm. you can't do everything. And I, I understand that. So while I would have liked more of her stuff, any of it, because I thought she was fun and fascinating, I understand why she can't have everything. Yeah. But she did figure out how to get him to drop through the bottom of the maze. And which, by the way, was right. super clever. That was cool. Shifting just enough to reach the other side so that she could get out and pull them out. So, I mean, she wasn't like, she wasn't just a pretty face. You know, yeah. she's smart and I like that she was a tiefling. She had the uh, horns. That means she has, oh, someone who knows more than me about this is going to comment. But it means she uh, is like a descendant of a demon, I think, or a devil of some kind. Okay. And she's got that in her bloodline. Yeah, I liked, I liked that about her. Yeah, I like that not everyone was just a straight human. You had a half lean. What yeah. was that little guy? He looked, I, I know he wasn't Bradley Cooper, but he looked like a little baby no, Bradley, Cooper. Bradley Cooper. No, he was Bradley Cooper. Hmm? It was him. It was, it was Bradley, Bradley Cooper? Cooper. Yeah. That's fun. Bradley Cooper, but, but Hobbit is fun. Who saw that coming? Because I didn't know that at all. I didn't know So that either. was kind of fun. Yeah, I like seeing a few different races with the Aarakocra, the guy, the fl- the bird guy at the beginning. That was fun. You saw a couple dragonborn, I, half dragon looking dudes. Yeah, I did like all of the little monsters. Uh, I shouldn't say little monsters. All of the monsters. And Jeremy and I were talking that the, the, the little part was what good. was offensive, <laughs> not the monster. <laughs> well, no, I meant like. I take, it, I take it back. Not little monsters. Creatures. Just monsters. Maybe it's better to say creatures. <laughs> creatures, yeah. Like just the different variety of creatures yeah. and the creativeness that goes into them, which is obviously built out of this, this other world mm-hmm. that's brought on screen. So I don't know how true they look like if they you're in that world, did it, yeah. did they mm-hmm. fit? Yeah. And Jeremy and I were talking about the effects were mostly pretty good. Like there were a few yeah. that weren't so great, but overall, like it was, they were good. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it looked good. It's Agreed. not your old school Ninja Turtle puppet costumes. Right. Love an old school turtle puppet costume though. Um, so did you recognize the guy from Bridgerton who played the paladin? Yes. Okay. Um, I thought he was but good. I also knew he was going to be in it from the previews. You knew he was going to be in it. He, yeah, he didn't stick with them, which I thought was weird. I thought he, from the previews, I thought he was going to be like a part of the team yeah. originally. So it, that was interesting to me that he wasn't, like he was only there for a little bit. Yeah, he was too high level. It would have made him overpowered as a party. He would have had to mess with the challenge rating, bring in some more wizards. I did like that they were talking about how he, what did he, Chris Pine's character is like, bah, whatever. And then they're like, oh yeah, I've heard of him. Oh yeah, I've heard yeah. of him. Well, I've heard of him too. Mm-hmm. So that was fun. Yeah, it's definitely a D and D thing of like lore. Right. Everyone has heard of a certain character in different ways. And so that like clearly shows that the story is pointing towards like you guys are going to go meet up with him or something. Which, by the way, this whole this gets me every time. But if you think about this, right, there's no technology, Mm -hmm. obviously. Well, I mean, or there's I mean, there's magic, but it's not not quite the same, which just as a little throwback in there. I love the what did he call him? The calling stones, sending stones. Yeah. And the the sending stones. And then they um the feedback happened and they're like, Oh, yeah. and they jumped away. That was very funny. But anyways, my point is actually how you're, you have no technology and you're going on these quests and you pass through this town and you meet somebody and you may never, ever see them again. Right. Oh yeah. Like you could maybe write them letters. I don't know how the mail system kind of worked, but not really established mail Send system. Send them with like and, ravens and stuff. Yeah. And so like that, that sort of blows my mind when I think about like super fantasy or whatnot, Mm -hmm. where they don't, they don't have the technology. And so if you meet people that are cool, you just, you either have to decide to stay there or they go with you or you go and you forget them. Yeah. And I know this is, this is like looking way too deep into this movie, but it makes me appreciate that I can meet people that are cool that live in different States and we can still stay, stay in touch and be friends. Aww. Aww. And then, but you think about those things. Well, that lends itself. There's a D and D trope called murder hobo, and so a party will just go into a town, and they're like, "This is just a town. I don't know anybody here. What's to stop me from just killing all these people?" 
and they just like, they are very like free with like, you know, just attacking people um, and stuff because it's like, well, the stakes are so different. Like that the reputation isn't going to follow them. Probably if no one already knew them, it's unlikely they're going to be like, okay, now, you know, in the next town over, find someone with a green cloak. Like you can just kind of do whatever you want. And so different yeah, parties will play it differently. Knows. It just kind of depends what your game is. It's like, so what happens? Well, here's the other thing, right? He goes back home to pick up his daughter and the house is basically abandoned. Mm -hmm. Would it really be abandoned or would somebody not have moved in there and started claiming that? Yeah, probably two years of him being in jail. Yeah. yeah. I, thought, I don't know. I think those are like weird, quirky things to think about, but I think about them. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Um, did you think, what'd you think of the acting? I thought Chris Pine did a good job. I'm a Chris Pine fan, yeah. so I think, yeah. Because I, okay, so I wasn't, nobody took me out of my seat at the theater and put me in this world. I was definitely observing this mm -hmm. and being entertained, right? I wasn't, the only thing that happened really is it definitely was a comedy. I laughed out loud several times. I looked at Rachel and I looked at Jeremy. I'm like, that was funny. Like, I will, you know, nudge Jeremy and be like, dude, that was funny. You know, that's my thing. That's my bit. Um. So it was great, but I mean, I n wasn't expecting to have any Oscar worthy dramatic yeah. moments. Right. So. I thought my favorite bit of acting was at the very end when Holga was dying and she was like, don't mourn for me. Like I've died a hero. Like I'm doing a good, yeah. like I did what I wanted to do. And I thought they'd actually pretty much set that up. Right. I mean, I mean, she clearly is just like, you know, just a solid, like I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. It's not like about sentimentality for me. And they bring her back and she's like, why'd you use it to bring me back? Like, which is, and she's conflicted because she's like, yeah, I'm happy I'm alive again. But also like you were supposed to bring your wife slash mom back. Um, I loved that because, you, well, I mean, you obviously saw it coming when she's dying because she, yeah, the little girl didn't know her mom, right? but she knew she knew her and, and they set it up. They had yeah. a family. They were a family. They set it up with the firefly flashbacks about like him trying yes. to catch it. And she's like, no, you just have to let it go. Like, okay. So he's going to have yeah. to let her go. I, the other thing, the little girl was crying when they got on the ship. I think was that when it, when she was crying, I don't remember, but she was crying. And I was like, dang, those look, those look like very real tears. Like yeah. go her. I didn't care about the little girl that much. Is it? Well, that's the thing. She didn't have a lot of screen mm -hmm. time and she didn't have a lot of like moving dialogue or anything, but she did cry when she was supposed to cry. And I was like, that's good on her. Like good acting yeah. for her. Yeah, her character didn't have, it wasn't done justice. I don't think totally because you're supposed to, you know, oh, really want them to get reunited. And every time she's on screen, she's like, ah, oh, I believe this guy who everyone else has been talking about how like much of a moron he is and how much they can't stand being around him. And we're supposed to believe that she spent the last two years with him and was like, yeah, he's the one telling me the truth. You just wanted it riches. And he's like, no, I didn't. I clearly wanted this. She's like, um, well, I believe him. And then we'll just walk away. And you're like, okay, I guess you just didn't roll a high enough persuasion check. Like she just doesn't believe you, man. Was the yeah, yeah. DC really that high? I guess. Now I'm just throwing uh, D and D jargon in here. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Just in case my three D and D friends listen, <laughs> DC they better listen. is like the number that you set where someone has to roll higher than that in order to like pass the check. So 15 is pretty normal um, because you're rolling a, a 20 sided die, and then if you get like a 10, you get to add whatever your bonus is to charisma, like to a persuasion check. And so Chris Pine should have had high charisma and he did. I mean, he was very talky and like was able to charm people and stuff like that. I think he was charming. Yeah. And I, I did like the part when he's telling the wizard or the, so, do they call him a wizard um, or a sorcerer. He's a sorcerer, which means that sorcerer. he's born with the magic innate and the wizard learns it all out of books. Okay. That's the difference between those classes. Touché. In, in a um, nutshell. I did like that. He's like, you, you know, you're, you can be counted on when it gets tough or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. He's like, when your life depends on it, you come through, which I think was very, it was a good thing to point out to the, the guy who's struggling with his confidence. Yeah. Right. I liked that. 
the other thing that I had down was, oh, my other, so I wrote down two, two sequences that I liked, which was her shape shifting through the whole thing. Right. Yep. And then the whole, what did they call it? The hither, thither. Yeah. The hither, thither sick. Yeah. When they were getting on, when they were hijacking the vaults. So mm-hmm. when he puts the painting on the bottom yeah. of the wagon and that whole sequence I thought was really yeah. fun too. Cause it was heisty. And it's fast paced. You have to like pay attention. Yeah what they're doing or you you don't get what they're doing if you're not paying attention and it was a good combination with her being a druid being able to transform into things like a worm or a fly or whatever they realized they could use that in order to like facilitate her getting places and it's not a combination i ever would have thought of previously like the teleportation plus druid stuff being useful but i thought it was good yeah yeah i like that and then then the painting falls down and they're like, why would they sort it yeah. like that? I thought that was a very well, well done. What about uh, my guy, the fat dragon? Loved that. He was so fat. He was so funny. He was such a chunky boy. I don't know why. Yeah, he said he must have found a, a new layer. Chris Pine goes, did he eat the old one? <laughs> <laughs> that was fun though. I did like um, the... The dragon that she, the stone dragon at the end too was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Was, it, was it a dragon? I'm pretty sure it was just a little dragon. Yeah, it was a little dragon. It was like a, a young dragon that the statue kind of, was of. I was going to say kind of lizardy too, but it kind of had like Dragons a snake are kind of lizardy, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was meaning. It kind of had like a snake type uh-huh. head, not like a pointy snout type head. Mm-hmm. What about the, oh, I don't have my monster manual here. Um, The leopard that had the stalks coming that, that was chasing them in love the it. labyrinth. You know what I'm I talking about? It. I'm sad that it was a bad creature though, because I like leopards. Okay. So you need it to be a good boy leopard. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is, but that's cool. It sort of was Venus fly trappy, the little mm-hmm. tentacles, which was fun. And I don't know why he didn't notice that other, like the ones coming at him. I don't know why he didn't notice in his peripheral vision that there was another one so that he could figure out that they were, it was projecting. It's called a displacer beast, a Puma like displacer beast that chases the heroes. Monsters are capable of displacing light to create a duplicate image of themselves a short distance away. The two toothy tentacles protruding from its back. That's quite a sentence. The two toothy tentacles protruding from its back attack the distracted prey with ferocity. Yeah, they did. I think they did that well then, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got in a good amount of monsters and beasts and stuff. I like the um, the red wizard, right? She's a wizard. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, she was a wizard. They kept calling them the red wizards. Yeah. Hats and it changes to red and black. Like I really thought that was a fun combination yeah. of costuming yeah. like it was good they did a good job mm-hmm. with that it was very weird but very good yeah. so would you see are you gonna go see the next dungeons and dragons colon escape from neverwinter or whatever are you gonna go see the next one based on your experience here do they have one in the books already? no i'm just assuming there's going the to books? be another one i would probably see it again something i read said this was a good bridge for like uh, Dungeons and Dragons, but they would really love to see a more serious one right. in the future. And I would be down for either mm-hmm. of those. I think my niece particularly um, liked this film. So if there was another one, I would, it would be something I would want to see with yeah. her. Like something we could do together. I definitely, I won't probably see this in the theater again for sure, but in a couple of months when it comes out, I'll probably sit down and watch it again because I, I can't even repeat the moments that I laughed out loud, but there were definitely multiple did, yeah. ones. So I would totally watch it again just because being in the moment and laughing was, that was fun for me. I don't know that Jeremy would watch it again. So it would have to be one of those Too that fantasy. I watched when he's like at work or whatever. Well, here's what the listeners are all wanting dragons. to know. Doesn't count. <laughs> what I, you cut out. I didn't hear you. I said there were dragons. It doesn't. Yeah, he's out if there's dragons. Where was it too whimsical for you? Not whimsical enough. Where does it fall on your whimsy scale? No, it was great. I loved it. It right in your whimsiness. Maybe this is because 
whimsy plus fantasy is okay. How is fantastic? It's called fantastic, Mr. Fox. How is there no fantasy in that? I mean, that doesn't seem fantasy to me. It just means like, oh, he's a great fox. He's an animal that can talk. So is Winnie the Pooh. There's animal lawyers. Yeah, you don't think Winnie the Pooh consists of it's children's fantasy? Maybe Winnie the Pooh is children's fantasy. Fantastic Mr. Fox is not. No, I don't. Which one's whimsical? Is Winnie the Pooh whimsical? No, I don't think it is. Winnie the Pooh's not whimsical, folks. Get in the comments. I don't know. You're the one who said I didn't like whimsical. I don't even, I'm going to have to go like look this up really hardcore and define what I like because I don't know. I didn't like Ms. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Come at me, bro. The listeners are never like going to forgive you for that, for that take. <laughs> but I did like, I did like Dungeons and Dragons. So does this make you want to learn more about the game Dungeons and Dragons? Oh, such an interesting question. Um, would you come and Jeremy's watch me run like, a game no. of Dungeons and Dragons after this? Like <sighs> one night, like a couple hours of it. What is it like a couple hours of it? I mean, will there be snacks? Of course there will be snacks. There's always snacks. That's like a number one rule of my games. It's like chips and pretzels and stuff. I could be persuaded to maybe like check it out. But here's the thing. If you get I don't know. I feel like I would be one of those people who's like, ooh, tell me more, tell me more. And then mm-hmm. I would get really engrossed in it. And then it would great. just take up too much time. Sounds great. You can be in my weekly game. That's fine. <laughs> We're adding a person in a couple of weeks. I would, I would definitely listen to it or watch it. Cause I don't really understand. I don't really understand how it works. Right. It, I get like, I understand fantasy on a limited basis where I'm open to fantasy books or movies or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to reread them probably. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not one of those people who, I don't even think I read the whole Lord of the Rings. I think I read maybe the first book or I listened to it on audiobook forever ago, but it's not something I'm going to reread once a year, once every two years or whatever. Right. So I would have to find the balance there. So like the games that I run, of D and D it's less of telling a big cohesive story. I mean, that is, you are trying to make that happen. It's more some friends doing improv. And then there's a, there's a loose cage around that where I am going, okay, so you're telling me you want to jump on top of this farmhouse and then cast a fire spell on it to burn it down. So like, all right, I'm going to need you to roll a die to see if your character is able to do that. And so like, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm giving it enough, trying to give it enough structure to, to keep it, you know, quote unquote realistic within the rules of the world that we're living in. If that makes sense. So for me, I'm like, I feel like I might get bored with that. Like it's not going to move too. It's not going to move fast enough. Sure. Yeah. Like if you're doing, if you're watching a battle or something, I mean, and it takes us an hour and a half to, you know, kill six goblins and a bugbear or whatever. But during that hour and a half, like someone will, you know, uh, pick up a goblin and then try to stick his hand into it and weekend and Bernie's him and be like, it's okay guys. Don't worry. I've got it under control. Like we've had that happen. Um, we always joke about weekend at Bernie zine or like you, th- he'll pick up a goblin and throw his body down the stairs to trip up some other guys. Like we're always trying to do little, we call it shenanigans. Like, okay, tell me if this is two shenanigans, but I kind of want to stick a bunch of daggers in the door to prevent them from being able to open it, like jam it up against the floor. And I'm like, okay, I'll allow it. So how far off would you say is this tabletop D and D concept that, of these games you're creating and playing to like RPG video games that are also fantasy. It's similar concept, different delivery. You're talking about like Skyrim. Yeah. Um, no, it's not far off at all. It's just, um, so I've never, I've never played Skyrim or Elden ring or whatever. Um, but the games that I have played that are kind of in that wheelhouse are just, trying to be D and D right. They're trying to let you make as many choices as you want, but it's, it's still a game that someone had to, had to design so that they can't make it infinitely possible. Right. The difference between in Skyrim, you can, I think you can like, you can be a spell person. You can be someone that uses swords, 
which is the same as D and D, right? You can kind of choose what sort of fighting path you're going to go down. You can be someone that is much more diplomatic and talks to people. That all is exactly how D and D is, right? Like how, how do you want to reach the end? You know, there's 10 ways to skin a cat. How do you want to get there to get that crown? You can go around this way. You can fight your way through. You can go over, you can dig under, right? There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, so, so you can just play it sort of by yourself though. You don't have to have your team of cohorts come over on, and play it with you. And they kind of adopt. First, th- that's the difference say, between Skyrim, right? Is that you don't have to have yeah. f- friends to do it. Yeah. And they kind of adopt very well. You don't have to have friends present with you to Correct. do it. I don't want to be like, you don't have friends if you play this game. That's no. not what I'm saying. No, I'm saying you have to have friends or I mean like people that you know are playing in order to do it. Yeah. And they sort of adopt the same rules as far as the same skeleton rules mm-hmm. of different creatures. Like they're. Yeah. There's okay, goblins and it, orcs. Would it be fair to say trolls. like most of your wizards are all going to be following the same kind of wizard rules? I mean, all wizards. So. When you say wizard, I'm thinking of the class of wizard, but then there's also sorcerers and warlocks who are also able to cast spells and they do those in slightly different ways, right? Wizards learning them from books and warlocks have a, a deity or like a, not a deity, but a patron um, or a cleric. A cleric is like a priest who's able to use spells because of how religious they are and they're able to use different kinds of spells. So there's like a pretty rigid framework, but then even within wizard, it's like, okay, which kind of wizard are you? Like, are you someone that conjures up images or are you someone that makes potions or are you someone that um, uses like fireball attacking stuff? Um, Are you someone that will like can touch a thing and change into a different thing where there's different like sort of fields of magic that you might go into, but you can be an evil wizard or a good law abiding wizard or somewhere in between. But generally speaking, as far as like what you, how you learn and et cetera, are are usually the same across these different mediums. I mean, the mechanics are the same, right? Every fourth level or fifth, every fifth level wizard is going to have two third level spell slots and four second level spell slots or whatever. Like, (laughs) and so like there's, they will have the same limitations about like how much magic they're able to do and how often, but they can choose whatever magic they want. I don't know if that answers your question or not. I'm just, I I think the world building is intriguing. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, this is something I thought about while we were watching the movie. I'm able to suspend disbelief. So I don't have to get too far into the world building to just accept it, whether it's logical or not logical. Mm -hmm. And I remember we both watched Reminiscence with Hugh Jackman in it, not at this, not together. But I remember we were talking about this. Did we yeah, watch it together? I, you think I was watching oh, Reminiscent right. with Hugh Jacks, Jackman it. and not because you were having me watch it? <laughs> okay, but you were talking about how the whole wars thing, you're like, what is that even about? And you were like, went down this whole thing and I was like, I didn't even think about that. I just accepted everything he said. There was a war. It caused this weird thing. Yeah, flooding, that movie could have happened we without the, the water level rising thing. That had nothing to do with anything. <laughs> um. I had a point here. Well, I don't even remember what Suspending I was going to brought this up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, so I like the world building, and but I can just accept it for as it is. And you're much more like, does this make right. sense? Yeah, I was, and even for this movie, especially, I was watching through trying to be like, okay, could you actually do this in a game of D&D? Like, would I allow it? Um, you definitely oh, yeah. could turn into a fly and spy on people, and then they could notice you. And you'd have to run away, and that's a fun little chase scene that you could do. That's, yeah, I would say most of it is pretty realistic. Could they make a hot air balloon that makes it look like he's puking out? Yes, heat? sure. You can do, I mean, <laughs> not the other instruments. than like, <laughs> can I just raise people from the dead as much as I want? You absolutely can raise people from the dead. You can do literally anything in a game of D&D. You know, you might not be able to do it. Like, is it, is it possible? Sure. But I love as a level one, you know paladin are you able to raise people from the dead no you'll have to go and do a quest you'll have to find a rich guy and convince him to raise your friend from the dead or whatever i mean okay here's my here's my other great. question and then i then i gotta cut it off somewhere because i could just ask questions all the time but so your characters if i'm correct you get to create your own Absolutely. character and then but you how do you get ranked because you're mm-hmm. saying a level yep. one so and so so if you have a character and you play a bunch of games, I'm assuming you beat quests and that's how you get more points or whatnot, mm-hmm. or that's how you level mm-hmm. up. Then can you, 
is there like, okay, this is going to sound so no, dumb. No, it's not. You know how there's like a state accreditation for education? Uh, sure. Yeah. So like y- you get your diploma mm-hmm. or whatever and they're like, okay, this is state accredited. So we know what this mm-hmm. means, right? So when you level up at your, at Rogie's D&D uh-huh. game, can you go to somebody else's D&D game and you have a level five, whatever, or whatever, level, whatever, whatever. Sure, you could. And yeah. that's So accepted. the way that um, I've always seen it done is there's two different ways that you can level up. You can either literally count the XP. You can make, okay, every goblin out on the field is worth 20 points. And so however many you kill, you get 20 points. And once you get to a thousand, you get to your next level, something like that. That sounds like a lot of work for me as a dungeon oh, master yeah. and like spreadsheets and stuff. So I've never seen anyone actually do it that way. I know people definitely do do it. Um, I've always seen people do it more milestones, right? Like this is a big, qu- this is a five level quest. Eventually you're going to get to this th- dragon and slay it. Um, but once you complete the first leg, the first chapter, you know, um, where you um, befriend this wizard in the town, that's your first goal. At that point, you'll go to level two. And then once you go and beat this banshee over in the forest, and that's, this is all building towards a bigger story, but then, there's like milestones you have to hit to go up level. So that's how we usually do it. Um, as far as taking that character and going and playing it in a different game, um, it's definitely, it's totally feasible. Um, as long as they're playing more or less by the standard rules of, you know, the official D and D wizards of the coast, you know, they might have homebrew rules. Um, there's stuff. So what's to stop somebody from just being like, Oh yeah, I have a level five, whatever. And they're the best. Mm -hmm. And they've never played before. I mean, you would know if they've never played before, yeah. but they've only played like two games. What's, st- what's to stop them from doing anything is the dungeon master. Like if you just came in, you're like, okay, I'm a level five paladin. What's up? Um, I'd be like, okay, like, where's your sheet? Like, do you have a paper, you know, that shows what all your spells are and what all of your attacks are? And Ooh. cause there's like standard, um, I can probably pull one up here to show Give you. Give me your report card, buddy. Yeah. I mean, it just resume, shows how much your, your how much hit, how many hit points you have and you know, what deities you follow and all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, but then, so there but then I can just say, no, you like you can't, for. you know, I, my players can't show up next week and be like, I gained two levels. What are you going to do about it? I'm like, no, you didn't like I'm in charge. <laughs> um, so yeah, you just go up. Like, that's the thing is that there's definitely a, a hierarchy of like, you have to just listen to what your DM, what your dungeon master is saying. And you know, you don't just get to do the things if they say like, nope, it doesn't work. So, so you, you tried to climb that tree, but you, but you rolled badly and you fell and you didn't make it up there. You don't just get to be like, no, I'm in the tree. Like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you can be, you can be a wizard that learned it from another wizard. You can study at the library. You can, your game could be set in like modern times. And I mean, I just finished listening to a game where they are playing as like high school freshmen, but who are in like an, like they go to classes, they go to like wizard class and bard class and barbarian class. And that's like how their school is set up. But then like after school, they went and got ice cream and like rode on skateboards and stuff. So you can set it in whatever kind of setting you want. It doesn't have to be high fantasy. When you say you listened to a game, you mean like people are podcasting their entire game? Uh, yes. Um, so does that mean one game in one sitting or does that mean? No, that, um, so I'm, ta- I mean, there's a couple of famous like ones. Critical weeks. Role is very famous. That's Matt Mercer. Um, I watch Dimension 20. So technically they're videos, um, but we call it theater of the mind. You don't have to literally be watching it. Um, you know, a lot of it is just, it's just him saying, okay, you're in class now or you're just like picturing it in your head. Um, their seasons like to play through one whole like story arc is usually like 20 episodes, which are each like hour and a half, two hours long. Um, they come out like every other week. It's that kind of thing. It's like watching a TV show. So one night doesn't always equal one complete campaign. Uh, it usually does but not. But it could, it, depending it, it on how typically you does not. Do yeah, it. you can you can absolutely do. It. It's called a one shot. Um, whenever we've tried to do a one shot, turns out that it actually takes like four or five nights. Um, and if you're willing to sit down for like a really solid four, four and a half hours, and everyone's focused and you're moving at a good pace, you're more likely to be able to get through it. Um, but you could just design a really little tiny dungeon and just have them get through in a couple hours if you really wanted to. But my guys have been playing mm-hmm. since January, mid January, and we're not to level three yet. We play like every How week. How many levels do you have? I mean, you can go up to level twenty. That's the max. Interesting. Yeah. It, 
This, this is all very fascinating. D&D, get at me. If you want to know more about D&D, I will point you in other directions because I am not any kind of world <laughs> expert. There is... I cannot overstate how much there is that I don't know. I've been spending all week. We decided at the last minute that we're pausing our campaign and go, doing like a little six week kind of mini campaign. And so I've, and we, and that's from like Tuesday to Tuesday. And so I'm like cr- desperately cramming and trying to learn about different planes. I mean, there's different dimensions. You can send people to hell or to heaven or to the ethereal plane or to Fay wild. And there's all kinds of different things. You know, there's a, there's just spells you can do that launch people across, or you can have a backpack, eat them. And that puts them in a different plane. Um, so I've just been, cr- I've been cramming <laughs> because a lot of it, I don't okay. know. I love this. I want to know if somebody did a, did a business deal over D and D like, you know, you go golfing and chat about yeah, your I'm sure. investments. I, I want to know if that happens. I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's. You'd be surprised. There's celebrities that play and athletes, I famous do know athletes. That. Stuff Jared like and I've heard some podcasts talking mm-hmm. about it. D and D. It was a fun movie. Am I going to go out of my way to watch it again? I'm. I probably will watch it. I'll probably rewatch it before the sequel. But I'm not going to go see oh, it. Yeah, in a couple, yeah. I'm not going to buy it on Apple TV and watch it in a couple months, probably. But we probably will, and then you could just watch it. Yeah, but I probably won't. I'll probably <laughs> watch. I'll probably watch some watch. people play D and D because, like, the guy just a little bit of free advertisement. Um, the guy that I don't know if you can see very well on my screen here. His name is Brendan Lee Mulligan. He's like an actual mm-hmm. genius, like in real life, and he's so good at crafting stories. And he has all of the rules memorized, and he's really, really funny. I mean, the uh, the people at this table are all like improv comedians. And so they, but they also are like really focused and get really invested in like doing a good job. And so they know the details of the rules, but are still able to riff and like do fun bits and stuff. And so it's just very enjoyable to mention 20, check it out. I love it. All right. I think that's, that's Thanks, it. Jess. Would see it again. Was fun. Yeah. Go see it. Yeah. Would recommend in, inoffensive right. at the very least, certainly not offensive. Did we talk about the main plot of the movie at all? No, we didn't. We don't care. No, we didn't. Go see it if you want to know the main plot. Yeah, this is a spoiler free. It It actually was not very spoily, other than Bradley Cooper was in it, which you had to spoil for me after watching it because I wasn't sure that that was Bradley Cooper. Well, I thought it was in the, like, I'm like, is that? No, it's not. I went back and forth like five times, and then Jer mentioned it to me on the way home, and I was like, okay, so it was. Like, yeah. Right. So I was in the same boat okay. as you, but I appreciate that. Get at us at flabbergasted pod or flabber pod or find us on social media. Um, howl at us, uh, go come to my house, knock on the door, ask to play D and D with me. I, I'll film a game of me playing D and D and put it online. I'm not, I don't I ain't scared. Be a, a patrons only. Ooh, yes, absolutely. Subscribe to our Patreon that we don't have. And we will see you guys next time. (laughs) We're getting there. (laughs) Bye. Bye.